right. We made it to Friday. Welcome to the whole lot of Zep channel. We're gonna be talking to some diecast, uh, some new things I got, and uh, a shout out to XLT Off Road Bear for a recommendation. Um, so let's just get right into it and uh, see what we got on tap. I'm sure you guys had the opportunity already to see uh, the Star Scan Hutch car I just posted. Um, I did the uh, theme. Uh, I thought that was appropriate for that car. Um, I checked it out before I put it on the uh, the spinning wheel, and uh, the the car is in perfect shape. Um, all right, I'm going to start off with this M2, and uh, I have a reason for having this. Um, I do have another Pan Am. I don't have a thing. This is uh, Europe, Pan Am Europe. Uh, I, I don't have a thing for collecting Pan Am. Um, that I, I mean, everybody's got their thing, but that's not my thing. Uh, it, honestly, that's just kind of weird. But hey, some people collect weird things and they like it. So uh, uh, just a quick shout out to Mark. Woodruff, who recommended me putting up a uh, white background so it would make it easier for me to have my phone focus on the cars at hand as opposed to what's on the wall. So um, I decided to hang this up. This is a uh, character drawing I did of Robert Plant and Jimmy Page back in uh, middle school in the early to mid 80s um yeah there i go dating myself again um but i think i was in eighth grade when i did that uh anyway this is what i'm using for my backdrop it it still works uh i'll always find a way to incorporate led zeppelin into anything i can do um <laughs> All right, so the reason I showed the uh, Pan Am uh, truck, um, that was actually um, a set that I was just trying to complete. Um, it didn't need to be completed. It was just something I wanted to do. So um, I have everything in that set. With that being said... Um, I could not turn this Pan Am down that is Philadelphia International Airport. And as you can see, I already took the screws off the base. Um, and if you'll give me just one second, um, there's uh, several reasons for, for having this. And uh, obviously the, 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 the main reason being that I'm a... a a Philly boy um, so there's that and uh, actually it's the delivery on it that uh, really has me um, intrigued and, and uh, I'll admit it, um, I'm Philly. Um, it, it gives me a sense of pride. Um, I will place the, uh, the van on the turntable. And uh, give you guys a, a, an explanation as to why, of all things, I'm collecting a... Pan Am van. All right. There it is. I'll just bring the phone up. Uh, Got to move my water out of the way. So, 
the reason, besides it being Philadelphia International, um, if you look at the eye, um, if you can get a good look at that, that eye is, is rocky. Um, now, anybody that knows Rocky, the original one that came out in 75, knows that Rocky lived in Philly. And he ran up the art museum steps. Uh, anybody who's anybody knows that and knows that about the movie. Um, for me, it's... It's it's obviously a little more personal because it is a, a Philly piece, and um, I I I have pride in that Rocky statue. Um, a fictitious character, yes, but that fictitious character uh, brought character to Philadelphia, and uh, and. And there's not one thing I did not love about that movie, even though I was pretty young when it came out. Um, you see that movie, it's a, it's a pretty much true representation of how tough times were back then. Um, uh, <clears throat> so anyway, um, this, this van gives me a lot of pride because... Uh, it has Rocky right there in the eye holding his hands up. Like the version you see of him at the top of the art museum steps putting his hands up. Or after he won won the fight and he has his hands up. Uh, it's just, it's perfect. Um, so I saw that and uh, said to myself, do I like Vans? If they're not gassers or customized with some cool paint jobs from the 70s, to me it's just a van with Pan Am on it. But when you put Philadelphia on it and Rocky on it, it becomes something else. Um, so you guys that are from maybe uh, other cities, states, or whatever, maybe like, yeah, it's all right. It's a cool piece. I, I guess you, you have to have a true appreciation for it uh, coming from your area. Uh, so there is my Philly piece. Um and I'm, and I'm actually really proud of it because because of that rocky <laughs> I, mean, I love the rocky on there i gotta admit it uh it just it's too cool now what i have um is from a recommendation by xlt off-road bear joe he had recommended to me the Shelby collectibles because there was a specific Mustang that I have an interest in, and it's uh, and I explained to him between the years of '66 and '68 a white Shelby GT350 um, with the blue stripes. Uh, I just. I love those years and that color combination on on the Shelby. Um, I will get to that one in just a second. Uh, Joe, you did not disappoint. Just like on the Cobra, you did not disappoint. Here, what I'm about to show you is the Aston Martin DBR1. Um, and I showed you another one I had that uh, is a matchbox. This is the Shelby Collectible, um, and it's a right-handed driver. <clears throat> um, these cars remind me very much of uh, Mini GT uh, as far as um, quality. Uh, and, that's just my opinion. I'm still a new guy, uh, so you more experienced people may have a different view or opinion on that. But uh, from what I've seen and, and 
where I'm coming from, um, they are very well crafted um, by far. Um, it, it, they are definitely beautiful pieces to add to the collection. And uh, thank you, Joe, so much for recommending them. And uh, just like other people have been saying, uh, when it comes to a recommendation from Joe about Ford, y you know you're getting a good recommendation. Uh, quite a few people had mentioned that. So, uh, Joe, I thank you for that recommendation because this Aston Martin is a very, very, very nice piece. Um, I like it a lot. All right, so there's that. Now allow me to remove that one there. I'll take these cars out because I think the camera might be focusing on cars behind it again. Um, I got uh, another car. Okay. Um, oh, there I go dropping the case. Alright, sorry guys, I'm trying to uh, open stuff with one hand here, and I know you, you're not getting anything on the camera except uh, half a spinning table or turntable on a table. This Joe, my friend, um, is, uh, just, um, wow, beautiful piece, uh, this is exactly what I was looking for, exactly, um, I, I couldn't be happier, um, I mean, uh, again, this is Shelby Collectibles. Uh, just like the DBR one I showed. And I did show the Cobra I got the other day. Um, uh, again, the doors and the hood open. Uh, they both, everything opens and closes fine. Um, and uh, I'll show you why. See, there's no holes in the bottom, no pressure points. It's not screwing up the alignment of anything. So, M2, take that into consideration because I know how much M2 watches this channel. Because <laughs> I'm so popular. <laughs> All right. Um, so... There's that. Now I will set this off to the side. And for some reason, my light is on. And I'm not exactly sure why. Um, I, I, I can't say this enough and I'll say it every time and every time it happens I'm not opening this uh, this blister pack yet it's just because I have too many of them open um, so let me turn the uh, table off here and uh, show you what I have carded um, I'll open these at a later time. I believe at this point I have way more Camaros than Chevelles, and I love Chevelles. Um, not to say that I don't love Camaros, but I, I don't know what it is. Every time uh, 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 one of the brands comes out with a new Camaro, I can't help myself. I gotta grab it. <laughs> How sad is that? <laughs> I swear I got OCDD, obsessive compulsive diecast disorder. Uh, <clears throat> um, 
but of course they make a Camaro and if it looks cool and I like the livery on it then uh, it winds up in my hands um, it looks like this uh, 69 SS was uh, modified a little bit it looks um, it looks like it's uh, jacked up in the back um, and if they're doing some modifications like that that is really cool and that's what it looks like uh, you can see the uh, suspension under there um, like I said there's Johnny Lightning does like this unusual mixed bag um, they either got cars with no steering wheels and no imagination when they were built or you come across their more modern stuff obviously and they nail it out of the park i mean i'm still trying to figure out how they got from point a to point b because point a sure was one hell of a train wreck from a lot of the cars that i've seen and quite a few of the cars that i have from their earlier days um and you know you got your typical uh painted headlights um the 67 and the 68 are the only ones that have that huge rounded rear wheel well um and then in uh 69 they squared it off um and then that th this is what's making me think that it's uh jacked up um besides obviously seeing it it's the back tire is sitting just below the wheel well and you can see like the the, the leaf springs um uh behind the wheel uh, at least i'm assuming that's what they are um, uh, but they of course johnny lightning did a good job with these they're more modern stuff it is definitely something to be praised and enjoyed um i don't know their earlier stuff it is is a head scratcher to me um and i honestly when i get some of their older things um i cringe because uh just like mama always said box of chocolates you never know what you're gonna get so uh that scares me a little bit <laughs> all right um this next car is obviously a matchbox um and i do already have it open um if i can just pull it out of the blister pack with one hand all right there we go so there we go Staying in the way there. Uh, what we got here um, this is the Jaguar, it's a 56 XK 140 Roadster. Um, I'll show it to you real quick and then I'll put it on the turntable. Um, what has me disappointed with this one, um, uh, the interior is kind of plain for one thing. Um, I think Matchbox did a better job with their, uh, Aston Martin DBR1 than they did with this Jaguar. Um, I'm disappointed because the steering wheel is on the left side. Um, I wasn't even really paying attention to that when I ordered it. I just assumed that it would be a right-sided driver. Um, so I'm kind of bummed out about that. Uh, the wheels look okay. They look a little too modern for a 56. Um, they did a nice job with detailing the front end, um, and, uh, the windshield looks nice. Um, I, I just really wish it was a, a right-handed driver, uh, that just bums me out. 
They did a nice job detailing the back. It, it, it's not like a premium matchbox or anything. It's a, it's a plastic base. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, metal body. Um, they they really did a nice job with it, and uh, uh, I was uh, excited to show. Uh, my friends uh, across the pond um, that I got a, a right-handed driver um, and unfortunately I don't uh, I'm not saying that this isn't a cool Jaguar um, the, the inter interior could have been a little more detailed um, Again, I have to find things to pick apart um, because that's just what I do. <clears throat> um, and that's nothing against the car company uh, or the Matchbox or anything. Um, I, I, the die cast itself, I think, looks really cool. They did uh, a good job with detailing things, um, minus the interior. Um, I just think they could have gone a little extra on on that that's all I'm saying the color's fine um I'm just bummed that the steering wheel's on the left side not the right side e even my uh Shelby DBR1 is a right-handed driver <clears throat> um so anyway that's what I got and uh, I'm not showing the uh, Porsche Carrera uh, S anymore because I have that boxed. And uh, within the next week, uh, somebody's name is going to get slapped on it. Um, so again, uh, uh, I'll ask you people if you wouldn't mind, um, it would be really helpful to see um people who are subscribing to me and it'll be helpful to you because i'll be able to see more people and uh, uh be more selective um I, I think what i'm gonna do is what i believe joe and david from twice diecast joe from xlt off-road bear um they they somehow managed to uh connect it device to the computer and uh it, it picked name at random so um i'm gonna look for that app and that's what i'm gonna do um, i'm gonna make this as fair as possible but just a reminder it's uh gonna be only for the uh, continental united states just for this first one um after that all doors are open, um, national and international, and there will be more giveaways to come. Um, so with all of that blah, 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 this is Rick. Uh, you've been watching a whole lot of Zep. We've been talking all kinds of diecast, and I'll catch you guys on my next video. Everybody be safe and take care.